Wow. That's Anubis. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen that promo. I apologize, <laughs> folks, but I just, I don't know why we saw the death case. Okay. It's the oldest god in the book. Well, there it Literally. is. <clears throat> anyway, welcome back to the desk. My name is Tom Pattinger, joined here by Anatoly Alasaladnok. And as we get into this one, it's going to be interesting watching Energy, a team that should be at the top per a lot of players' eyes, but not quite there yet. Take on Mouse Sports, a team on the rise. And uh, they've been on the rise a little bit, finding the victory over SK Gaming. Dropped the set earlier to Dignitas. No surprise there. Dignitas completely on fire. If Energy want to be able to combat against Dignitas, sure. need to find a win here. When it comes down to it, Energy, like we said, have been on the up and up when you watch the summertime split, but the first week left them a little, and just not really doing it. Now, here against Mouse, hopefully things turning up Everything, when it comes down to if you want to analyze energy, there's not much really to figure out. There's not really an issue. I think that week one was just rust and come get back to it. I don't think that they understood how to really play the Baron. They tried to run into support, didn't work. They tried to run into soul lane, didn't work either. So they started to ban it away. Found a victory over Obey Alliance in the beginning of week number two. And that could be the momentum to find a victory in this set too. I mean, when it comes down to it, the players are playing fantastically, adapting up to his old nonsense. Emilito also stepping up. And Yamin, I, I, I sat here on the desk and just preached about Yamin last time around. Uh, possibly the most consistent player of Smite of all time and certainly showing why he's known for things like that here in the fall split. So I really enjoyed what's been going on here with energy. On the flip side, Mouse. These guys are uh, working their way up. Mouse has looked kind of interesting at some points, uh, leaving some to be desired, but at others, we've watched Mouse just completely surprise people. So Mouse has always been one of my favorite teams to watch as just a, as an entertainment factor. I mean, eat some popcorn and watch Mouse. But if I'm rooting for them, if I'm a fan, I think I've got some heart problems at this point. Ever since they got Spudio inside that dual lane hunter position, Dardis has been stepping it up as well. The chemistry yeah. has certainly started to rise for all of Mouse Sports. Big Man Ting stepping it up, making a lot of highlight plays. I think Mouse have a lot of potential to go far in the falls, but maybe even make worlds. I mean, that was a that was a big deal that you mentioned, Spudio. We saw him come in, and meet, there was an immediate improvement. And now we're seeing the long-lasting improvement. This man on your screen right here, Dardes, has been front and center for this squad. And rare is the occasion that a support player really gets a lot of the fanfare. But this guy plays loud, proud, and he is right in the middle of everything Mouse tried to do. The accuracy of his pulls is actually so high to the point where... A lot of teams will give up Sylvanas on purpose, trying to focus out that Sylvanas with like a lot of isolation tactics. But instead, when Dardis has the Sylvanas, you don't even have timing windows to do it. He's just going to avoid all of it and create plays on the flip side. Even the Cherio playing his stapled Hun Bass from time to time, making it happen. Cherio and this team has been known for their sort of off-the-wall strategies and in seasons past, that was kind of like, well, can they play the real game? Which I always rolled my eyes at for what it's worth. Now in season five, that's kind of what everybody's doing is being open, being honest, and picking whatever the hell they want, whatever I should say, suits the team the best. Mouse Sports, energy on the way. Picks and bands here. And it's going to be energy here on the left-hand side with the first pick. And as as we've seen all throughout the past week or so, it's been conversations about Freya, Naja, Chernabog, and Baron Samadhi. Also, the Athena. Can't forget about her. Those are your top five for 5.15, which is still to be played today and tomorrow in the SPL. Once we go into week number three, that's when 5.16 is going to hit. And then we might see a drop-off in the Naja. Yeah, Naja is going to be changed where he gets no no extra power from the passive. I still think Naja will be a strong choice. Naja sure. has generally always been strong. But the ROM going to be banned out to keep that out of the hands of Spudio, which leaves both the Athena and... Who is that? Who? Naja. Naja. There you go. The yeah, Athena and the <laughs> Naja are still available. The Naja are available. You got to take one if you're energy. It's because Naja. if you leave both of them open, then Mao's going to get it. We know Cherio loves the Naja. And even with his ping all the way up in Egypt, still makes it work somehow, somewhere. Artemis is going to be the hunter selection here for Mouse as they look elsewhere. 
things to combat Najah very well are CC Immune Ults and, uh, and Raijin will certainly bring one of those to the party. So we were actually talking about in week one where Big Man Tings prioritizes the Raijin and Spudio prioritizes the Artemis. Athena was up, but knowing Dardis is Godfall, it's just so vast to the yeah. point that you would rather allow your hype, your late game hyper carries just the comfort zone and level of playing their preferred gods. Well, Soul, on her and Naja are the choices here for energy. So uh, Jungle, Hunter, and mid lane seemingly have been selected already. Mouse on the clock right now. So you can go ahead, as Jean-Cui has picked for Mouse, you can go ahead and ban out the Athena and not be yep. afraid here any longer. Definitely can. Next pick will go to Mouse, so they could go for a Guardian pick, knowing <laughs> Dardas. It's so unpredictable what Guardian he really wants to go. So you can ban away some of the staple supports and just allow Dardas to run the game. Where would you go as far as uh, Darda's support right now? With the Raijin and the Jean Kui keeping people in place is the name of the game. Kumakarna would be the best possible selection, I think. You got the Rude, the, the Mez. You also got that knockup to allow more DPS for Artemis. I also like the Kumbakarna because it's going to be able to deal with the in-hand characters on her soul. And Naja to a lesser extent as the game gets later and later becomes an in-hand based character. Naja is usually building power and then he's got an interesting attack chain plus his flaming spear. So all of those in the mines right now for energy. Mouse thinking about the Amaterasu. So it looks like we're going to see an Amy support most likely. Kakulin here is the warrior of choice for energy. Now looking for either a jungle or a support, most likely a support. Naja has played support a couple of times today, but it will be the mm, ninth pick, Athena. And it's quite a rarity. That's really wild. We're in week number two of the fall split, going from first pick, first ban, to now ninth pick for Athena. Energy probably didn't want to play the Athena at this point in the game, wanted to go for something else, but sure, why not? I'll take the Athena. Well, the Bacchus Sura is the jungler of choice. Amaterasu will play support for Dardes. Now, when you look at both of these drafts, who's going to win is the question that immediately comes to mind and the question I'll pose to you guys out there in chat. So, Mouse, Energy, very, very interesting. I like what Mouse have drafted, and there's a lot of power there, but I think Energy just clinging to what they know well. It's all about the engagements. Athena, Naja, if you can land a double taunt and ring bounces afterwards, now you got the Soul to fire, the Supernova knockups. I like Energy's draft as long as they can catch Mouse slipping with the taunts. Well, I feel like I can hear them from here. Commentators ready and waiting. Game one, Energy and Mouse. Thank you so much, Desk. Energy and Mouse, game one underway. And I really do agree with the Desk. I love Mouse Sports, his comp here. I agree. This is the right sort of check. N not, it's not even jank anymore, I know, right? This, like, there's this, no such thing as jank anymore. No. You know. Well, Mouse Sports would take exception with that. I'm sure they could find something that would be jank. They played Agni support earlier this year, mind you. But this is the right sort of not exactly what you've been playing in Smite for the last five years but still very competitively viable. I think this AMA support really ties it all together. We've seen this a lot from EU United when Polar Bear Mike likes to play this alongside, when Benji gets the Jean Kui, things of that nature. I, I think that this is a really good draft for Mouse. It balances your late game. Your, their, their team fight is just filthy. They, they've they got yeah. so much AOE and so much control. I'm actually looking at the comps and I'm like, actually, which one's the oldest, the youngest god out of these? And I think it's Kukulun, which is... Yeah? It's that or Amaterasu, right? It's got to be Kukulun. No, yeah. it's Kukulun. Yeah, it's definitely Kukulun. But also, like, these are pretty old school gods in this one. New power creep. What are you guys talking about? Who are you about? talking about? It's the old power creep you're going to worry about. That's, that's right. The it's, the, it's the constant update of all these older <laughs> gods that's really going to throw you for a loop at this rate. Cherio in the mid lane, though, playing the back of Sora. We normally see him on the Guardians, but this time he's going for the Assassin style. Only real Assassin that he really shines on has been the Naja through the years. He generally likes to go for the CC heavy gods normally. A lot of Hun bats as well throughout the years for Cherio. But CC but again, right? ex Exactly. And this is something that we're starting to see more of from him, though, is back to the more traditional assassins and maybe staying away from things like Giannis Jungle, which he played quite a bit of so far this season five. And it, this is the style that I think Cherio can do well with. It allows him to power farm very, very quickly and pick his fights where he wants to. Bakasura dictates fights very well. He can disengage very easily because of his movement speed on his passive. He can get fights going very easily with that regurgitate. And Cherio's one that likes to set the pace of his engagements, doesn't seem to be able to 
once the fight gets going in a direction, that's the way that Mouse Sports likes it to continue to go. They aren't really a counter engage. Big sort of Tom, but the impale hits. It's a hit. Dada is not Spudio, but Spudio still beads. Yep. In preparation for that impale that was coming up after. So still a win for energy on the tower line there of Mouse Sports. There's Big Man Tings pressured up by Yamin in the mid lane in a 2v1 hit. This is, this is just energy showing dominance Pressure. in every single lane. I mean, Emil is just chunking and chunking and chunking down Dardes. And yeah, that's not the one that you necessarily want to chunk down, but it's not like you're doing anything else better with your time at this point. You're right. Pressure in every lane. Purple buff invade absolutely on the table here for energy. Yeah, and energy here as well when you think about it. They've had an awkward week one and week two. They're trying to bounce back. They did defeat Obey for the first time in a while. And now against Mouse, this is a game that they should be winning. But it's been an awkward start because of how good they looked in summer. Shell from both supports. Emilzies was trying to save ML some damage from Spudio's AoE coming through as Dardes is able to escape, adapting in Yemen. Instead of chasing that kill for first blood in duo lane, decide to invade red instead. And that's uh, a good idea because the fact that red buff experience and gold, it, not only are you getting it for yourself, but you're taking it away from the opposition. It's basically worth just as much if not more, when you factor in the actual buff itself that it provides to Yemen, meaning that he'll be able to clear faster and out-trade the opposition from here on out. And now the purple buff on the left-hand side will go to Energy as well Ooh. now. Back Harpy's here. Don't be hooing. It was fine. Calculated. What's he you know? I mean, that's a level five. Good call it. half a mile away, that. Oh, okay. Could have yeah. got a bus through there. Oh, could have. Just yeah. nice and easy. Wow, don't get... I, uh, I, I don't go so English on me, dude. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I can. I've not said that line in a while, and I was like, it's a perfect time to use yeah, it. Yeah. Could have got a bus through there. Well, it w wouldn't it be a double decker through there? That's what but we call a double decker just a bus. We don't have a different word for it. Wait, all of your buses are two story? They aren't no. like special buses? No, but I mean, there is special buses, but I've only. I, I've been on those. Now and what, again. What was it like? Pretty fun, actually. I'm glad you enjoyed your bus. Ride. Had lights and everything. We got there really quick, too, which was nice. Big Sash! Canceling out. The actual dash away from Big Man Tings, and he actually consumed his beads to do so. Very worried about the all in from adapting there, who is level 5, granted. And use the ultimate, so good reason for Big Man Tings to be concerned in that spot. Yamin can drop a supernova upon landing, and that would have spelled the end. Seems like Maniac does not want to take on Nika. He's more concerned with this right and half of the jungle as he gets some pressure onto Cherio, who's still level 4 at the moment. Energy off to a great start. At the moment, a mouse on their heels already. Cherry finally hits level 5 off this speed buff, but Maniac is the reason uh -oh. that Cherio hasn't hit 5 yet. I should thought Adapsim was going to flank all the way around the back then, but instead he wants to take away the purple first of all. The trap could be set, but they may not be interested without adapting every ultimate. Might not be worth staying around to try and fight. Plus, Yemen's pretty far away right now, just back to base and finished off his pen boots, so he's a pretty far ways away to continue that red buff invade. But even when you don't get the get the enemy buff, look at what it forced Mouse Sports to do. Instead of the traditional soloing of red or yep. maybe a double split, you forced Mouse to triple split it, which basically takes farm away from them because of how that shared XP works. That means that their whole team isn't getting quite as much. So that's where invades, it, it causes so many little things that your te enemy team has to adjust for that even when you aren't there, it ends up helping. Seen so many new items in this second half of the split. Obviously, it's early in this one, and that's why I'm bringing up items, because you never know which way they're all going to go these days. Any item that's really stood out to you of like, wow, I'm surprised we saw this? I'm a little surprised we've seen so much, not not, not so much items, but lack thereof in the, in the sense that we're not seeing a lot of Warriors blessings, really any blessings at all in the solo lane sometimes with this start that Maniac has gone for, where it's you start rush. with Boots 2, teleport back as soon as you have enough gold for Warrior Tab I. That, that has been pretty popular thus far, and I think that it, it, it paid off in this game because, like I said, it's Maniac's fault that Cherio hasn't, is so far behind in XP because those back XP camps have been invaded twice at least by Maniac. Big Man Tings is going to get taunted and takes a lot more damage than bargain for. His Yamin followed up beautifully there, but not enough for the kill. Big Man Tings didn't have his beads, remember, adapts his sashes on Dardes and takes him up to the sky. I don't know if there's enough damage, though. Cherio's got Regurgitate on the ground. That's forcing back Yemen. Dardes does indeed survive. As Cherry still has to dash away, but Cherry does a good job of at least making sure that Yemen and Emilzy can't guaranteed follow up on Dardes when he comes back down. So nobody dies on Mouse Sports, but Energy in a 
comfortable position to keep the pressure going, actually. I'm glad that they stick around here. Smart. There's nothing really in the jungle for them to take Gold Fury, maybe, but why not take a free tier one time mid? This is so much better because it opens Gold Fury up later down the line without that same sort of risk of playing with fire and really risking a Gold Fury getting stolen away. Just ask SK how much that hurts. And Melzi, I think, just tripped back to base and then straight back to the action again to pressure some more. They get the purple buff. Looking towards the red, four members strong now. This is, this is classic energy in, in the way that I really love how versatile they can be. I, I think back to season three, the beginning of that year, even towards the fall, where they have their games where they, they play that slow, methodical method, and you, you, it, it's 10 to 9 at yeah. the very end of the game, but they just outslayed you so much better. But they also have these games where you just don't get to play. You if you, to if you just draft poorly and, and aren't ready for the pressure that they're going to bring to you, you just don't get to play. Look at these players. Is it a Melito? Blinks in. Yes, we didn't mention he had Blink here, but he got punished heavily from Dardes in response. Dardes going to take a bit of poke back from a Milzy after the fact there. But this is how confident energy are playing with this. Blink is confident. Yes, that is a good word for it. A little... It is confident. A little overconfident, I'd say, especially against a team composition that has this much CC. But Desert's Fury is a 75-second cooldown these days. So why not? That also does 65% of the enemy's health if you can hit all your spears. So why not, I guess, is, is, is right. Now, Spudio has to use his ultimate just to get, make sure that he stays safe in that moment. So ML doesn't get punished too heavily. His ult should be up first. And it probably will be. I mean, obviously it will be. You'll see the little diamonds on the left and right hand side. If you've ever noticed those next to the character portraits, that's when the ultimates are up. If you didn't know. I did know. But I'm in case you didn't. I'm talking to the viewers, not you. I know. I'm just letting the viewers know that I knew. I'm glad you knew. Not to, not to belittle them, of course. No <laughs> offense. Of course. This may need to... I mean, I'm a little bit worried with this game getting out of control real quick that they might need a graphic content warning of just brutality in this game. There's no kills involved in it. It's just farm, 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 and make sure you strip every bit of experience from enemy jungle against the back of Sarah. This is something that Energy has done, like I said, going back for a while, where they just have games where you don't feel like you got to play Smite game at all. And it's you look back and go, where did we go wrong? We didn't position horribly. We didn't give up kill after kill after kill. We just weren't capable of being able to defend our buffs, whether it was composition-based or positioning-based. Losing buffs over and over and over again. Adapting's level 9. Jerio's just level 7, just now hitting level 8. It makes three members group up as well, which is what you're seeing here, which is putting further behind energy. This is gone. Seeing a window for a gold, and they're going to burst it down very quickly. Desert Fury, and of course, the Supernova coming through big for energy, and now a Millsy's a little bit too far forward here. This has got to be the best blood. possible first blood, first blood coming. ML will fall to Dardez Mouse. Gets the first one, and that makes it so they're only losing by about two and a half thousand. Hey, on paper though, if anyone just tuned in and don't look at the gold, they just see one zero. They're like, oh, yeah. energy is still continuing on the same old trend they were last week. Not quite. They're looking pretty good so far today. Now, like I was saying with this composite for Mouse Sport, their team fight is nasty. So even though they're behind right now, it's not the end. Well, in the jungle, they're going for that bit of a team fight. Now is adapting, gets pressured. But Cherio's ultimate now on cooldown. Spudio turns up to the fray, but Yamin's at level 10. Low on Mana, so Energy going to turn tail instead. And it did allow Big Man Tinks to get a little bit cheeky and push up a wave in mid to a tower. Spudio's done a good job of this game of using his ultimate as CC immunity against the on her, which is an important skill to have in this particular matchup. Because if you just you have to use beads in response to an impale off the pillar, then he's going to be able to abuse that cooldown so easily. But not having the ultimate, it hurts you, yes, as Artemis, but still having beads means that you aren't quite guaranteed dead. Definitely one of those matchups that was on, in the old days on paper was definitely a 50-50 skill-dependent one. I think Anher definitely has the edge now with the cooldown of his ultimate being so much lower and, of course, gives him CC immunity too. The old days, it would be mainly, you know, the Artemis getting the aggression going and then Anher going, no, I've had enough of that. This is, uh, this is definitely a matchup that... I, I have always felt pretty on her favorable just because that ultimate, even when it was a longer cooldown, if you can jump into the Artemis and she can't turn and burn you, what does Artemis really do against you? I, I've always felt that way. Well, Energy going to get their second purple buff on the map and their second red buff on the map yet again. And that's where the experienced lead is starting to continue to grow consistently. It means that Mouse, though, is starting to invade the right-hand side a little bit more. Cherio feeling Good. the advantage here. He's level 10. Going to get a ward placed down there. Bad news is that, that was at the same time a minion wave was there. And that makes it a bit awkward because they kind of telegraph what was going on. Emilzi ulted 
towards Maniac, trying to cut off yeah, Cherio, assuming which way he'd go, because they didn't know that their XPs had already been taken. And that's a logical idea there by Maniac, say, okay, we saw him on this ward, maybe he's going to go to our XPs next, alt me, ML, we're, we're going to yep. be able to kill him, he'd but already done it. he'd already done that. So Cherio, while a little bit off on the timing of by getting seen by that minion wave, actually ends up outplaying the opposition because now Amelie's ultimate is down and he didn't lose anything. So we got a full Bancroft talent then for Yamin on the soul. Meanwhile, a mid lane Big Man Ting's working on the stacks of the Book of Toth into the Book of Dead, which is one of those combos that we're going to see a lot of this year. And I think he might even grow some more. A shield from Book of the Dead. It's absurd. It's so big. It's absurd. It, it just it saves your life so often and it's so good. Now, I do think that going Book of, De Book of the Dead right after Boots in Book of Thoth being complete is a little slow for my liking. It, it means that your pen is coming out so much later, and now you're going to have a much tougher time killing a Mealzy or especially Maniac. But with the level of farm that Big Man Tings has had and just the outright power in the build, he can still do some relevant damage to those sure. characters, but it means that adapting Emilito and Yamin are on high alert for how much damage he's going to do. I'm kind of looking at it because he's going to be behind anyway with how the state of the game's going. It's going to be a good situation to have the health, you know, to survive those sure. engagements. Because if you're dead, you don't live. Desert Fury used by Emily. Oh, oh, look wow. at Spudio. Spudio will use the ball and adapt it. Way more poke than he bargained for. Nika's over here. Now the ghosts are out as everybody on energy looking to turn tail. Nika forced over to these buffs because of the, the constant pressure of energy on that side of the map. Maniac, as a result, gets to free farm. The right-hand side, he'll proxy a wave. He'll be able to get these XPs. And there's no Gold Fury for Mouse Sports to take. So all that happens is a couple ultimates down from Energy, a shell from Emilzy. Who cares? Maniac ends up get, getting way ahead. Emilzy's still going very deep there, but he had Yamin slowly coming in for backup, and that got some good poke off of Big Man Tings. In the jungle, Maniac trading out with Cherio, and Cherio not getting the better end of that matchup. Not quite yet. He will sooner than later. Once Stone Cutting Sword is done, that'll be his next katana. He'll be in a much better spot to take those one-on-one -on -one trades up against Maniac, but... Maniac's build right now is all about taking those one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one -on -one fights at this stage of the game. Later on, he'll end up selling this Gladiator Shield. I think selling Runic Shield is usually a pretty decent idea in the late game as well, depending on what Nika builds and how much power he ultimately has. Uh, but right now, he doesn't have a lot of health, but he has a lot of effective protection and just way more damage than anyone can handle. Now, Energy's doing a good job in this early game. We've got themselves a bit of a lead, but this next gold period is going to be very telling. Five seconds till the respawn of it. And if Mars can find it, or at least, you know, get a good trade off of it, they could end up on top or back to even keel again. And Melzi going in on his own and gets ulted in response from Cherio. Follows up with a taunt. The good ultimate from the supernova from Yamin backs him up and still a wow. is alive. Those tank boots, so critical for him to stay up in that spot. And now he gets to back and just use his ultimate to come back. That could be gold period now. Go for gold, exactly. Yamin had a great ult there, by yes. the way, to force Cherio back, peel Dardes off simultaneously. And Dardes actually to use his ultimate now out of mana too and Melzi back at full health with his ultimate to the front line to taunt big man things meanwhile the carry's working away at the gold fury and Melzi's taking a lot of poke over here but he's still standing tall good ring toss by adapting gold fury reset momentarily it felt like but this will go down for energy just already two in their favor through the first 15 minutes. And that's a worry for me when Mouse Sports have three members surrounding a support and they still can't manage to bring him down. A lot of yeah. that granted was towards what Yamin did. Is this? I thought for a second this might be a pyro call with all four of them being hit. It might still be Should that. Be. Should be. This is a good pyro call. This is what we see a lot from pro teams. If you lose the gold fury, enjoy your consolation prize in the pyromancer. They do have good wall coverage too, just to keep vision of Yamin coming through mid, realizing they had that window. So the gold lead isn't stretched as much as they could have done at one moment in time. Mouse are just trying to battle back where possible. This is, it, it, this might sound weird, but this is an encouraging performance for Mouse because this game could have easily Got out of control. gotten out of control very easily. And it's still heavily in energy's favor, but it's not by any means over. And Mouse has definitely learned how to fight back in these games better than they previously did. Bit of distraction here is Maniac looking to solo Cherry on his own and boom, he got angry and you don't want to make Maniac angry. He'll get himself the first kill for himself and energy this game. When you can get away with a build like Maniac has with very little actual HP in the build and Cherio really hasn't been able to come over because he's been so concerned about this left hand side by energy and th this is no coincidence that energy is worried about the left and lets Maniac go this super aggressive kill you when I want sort of build on the right 
for just when Cheerio tries to do something like that, he's able to focus him out very, very easily. Great play by Maniac. Oh, did that ring touch his head? I thought it might have, but he leapt away the right time to Big Man Tings just to get back to safety with that Thunder Crash. Can't believe it's only one for one, though. That's the awkward thing, this. This feels very like Season 2 EU for a second, but there's been a way more fight in them. Way more fighting. It's just been close fighting where no one ultimately dies, just everyone gets away with low HP, though with how much damage is in this game between the, the Baka, the Artemis, the Raijin on Mouse, and then uh, on Energy side, the, the Soul and the On Her, they all get away for long. Oh, Yamin can play with his life here. Disapparate is there, gets a big shot, a great shell as well, just a top up in case he needed it, but it wasn't really needed. And Mills, he going to taunt two now. Dart is a knee attack in an opening. Comes Maniac oh, with a three-man knockup. Who's going to handle Maniac here? I'll answer that preemptively. Nobody. Spudio, dead, because Maniac felt like it. Cherio dead because the Mills is going to dash down and throw out the reach. Nika is in trouble too, but he gets a good heal. Still being chased by three, adapting, credited with the kill now. Four to one. Fire Giant? Full HP Kakullin, mm. by the way. No, literally no one tickles Maniac in that well, fight, I mean, and how can they? He was very late to the fight too. Everyone perfect. was already consumed, but that was the perfect timing. It was, it was perfect timing, and Yamin again gets a, a beautiful bait in that mid lane. He's able to use his disapparate perfectly. The, the well-timed Aegis, as soon as he comes out, and you called it, Amilzi with a with a near frame oh. perfect shell. The shell, like he landed on them like that's good protections, but I still think he's. Oh wow, that shell was straight afterwards too. Beautiful. And it's upgraded too, so those auto attacks from Spudio or from Tings, whoever was there, weren't Cherio going. was the key. That's one of the reasons upgraded shells True. are very useful. The blocks, a couple of those autos in that Butcher Blades form, makes a big old impact for the team, especially on cleave attacks as well when you think about it. Huge. Uh, I agree. If you're seeing Bakasura in your games, yep. which if you're anything like me, you've seen a lot of Bakasura in your games recently, upgraded shell early is a huge deterrent for him because oftentimes, especially oh, yeah. in the early game, Two autos is the difference between surviving and, and ended up on the respawn. Definitely. I guess Bakasaurus sprint, definitely useful for giving your team the mobility to run away when they can't get out of the cripple field and beads. Second option, shell, which most of the time is more useful in a lot of those circumstances. There's also one more, though, which people still don't use. Phantom. You really think Phantom? Upgraded Phantom. Does it stop you from getting body blocked by the minions? No, but it reduces the amount of damage done by a considerable amount, even though it was true. Right, but wouldn't her upgraded Horrific Emblem just be better for that? Because of immunity, because of regurgitate now. But CC immunity doesn't cleanse attack speed slows anymore. It doesn't, but he still keeps him chomping away. When he's got sure. Katana, he's yeah. still going to be chomping. It doesn't yeah, he's still going to be chomping pretty as, fast. As a support player that has to deal with Bakasaur so much, you've got sure. to like think about all the options of like, okay, What's the best case scenario here? Should it be Shell? Right. I've never done the Phantom. I still feel Phantom is underutilized I, by I teams. agree with that. But I saw. I think Horrific Emblem is too, because it's not just attack speed. It's that he's losing attack speed yep. and he's losing damage overall It's it, once you upgrade it. That's so I, th I think it hits him on two fronts, but Phantom can still do the same job. And he's still got Witchblade and the likes and oh, yeah. Guardian Mail. They will always come into play if you're going to get hit by the Cleaver text. Like, well, hit me. You can be slowed. That's, uh, it helps a little bit, but sometimes Baka just has those games like, well, Johnny had earlier today in the, in the first oh, yeah, minor the league set where he just, uh, he just has those games where he's unstoppable. Now Adapson got a little bit too far forward, got punished with losing half his health and his ultimate and the Mills, his ultimate too. But the rest of energy piling on forward as Nika piles on forward in his own. Great damage Cherry. out of him and Cherry gets from the back. Perfect angle by Cherry right now, but he gets Bounce. blown up by Yamin's ult. Emilzy might be trying to do volume two of the finishing blow on a Cherio as the rest of energy surges forward. Emilzy is going to look for it. Former teammates once upon a time. Not now. I don't know what to add to that. I was just like, ah, oh, these guys used to be on the same team. They, they were. A while no, since I've no seen them. No longer. That. The old London conspiracy days. Maniac going to pick up Nika, who did great work on the front line to set Cherio up. Just the black up wasn't really there for him. Big Man Ting's forced out on the left by a Mills, you know, Dapton hanging around. Oh, which look means Yamin. This is where, uh, you know, you do, a, you do a story mission in a game, and it's super long. It takes you forever to get through it. You're traveling all over. I'm already thinking of Spider-Man. Yeah, I was about to wake up. And, it, and it, you end up right at the start. You finish the mission. And there's another mission right in front of you, a side mission. You're like, oh, I wanted to do this quest. This that was, is perfect. It was on my way. It, I just, uh, dude, I'm sick of this game. That was energy right there. They win the team fight, and it just so Would happens to carry them that? to the Phoenix. Oh, well, don't mind if I do. I'll take that up right here. While I'm here, I might as well. Pyro goes down, as they might as well, on the way back Why from not? taking that Phoenix, too. It would be rude not to. Level 17, then, for adapting and Yamin. 
Credit where it's due to Big Man Tings keeping pace with Yaman in this game as well. With an 11,500 experience deficit between these two teams. Big Man Tings staying equal par. He's actually really impressive. Big Man Tings has had a good season five. Uh, I agree. I agree. Mouse Sports, his, a, lot of the, a lot of the hype around them has got to be around this guy. His um, transference from the support role to the mid lane has really come up big for him personally. And I agree. Credit where it's due. I did not expect that after seeing how his support games were going. His mid is in a league of his own. They should have just listened to him the whole time and given him the, all the red buffs and, and gotten him all the kills when he was a support at this rate. Cherry up, off on an adventure. He'll meet Maniac. Maniac won't give up the chase, though, and he wants to keep this going. Cherry taking damage, and all he's after is see if the speed buffs up. He'll find it out. He's going to steal it away. That's to Anger adapting, and where is adapting now? Oh, adapting's hunting. And oh. Melito, they're going to try and deny the kill. The chase is on for Cherry. And Mills is like, guys, can we look at ending the game, please? Cherio uh, needs to pay for his sins, okay? It's, it's just the way this goes. Blood for blood. You stole the speed. You angered the blood. You steal your life. Yeah. Exactly. It's how it goes. Now we can, can we can resume the game. 22 and a half minutes in, and the game can be you because the fire giant's about to come back up one more time. There's only one tier two tower left standing for Mouse Esports in the mid lane, and two fire. Sorry, two phoenixes available. Two man soloing of the fire giant. Where did it go wrong here? Did it ever start right in the first place? Not not really. It just seemed to be that energy was on time for buff camps so often. And you, you, you see it all the time, right? Where a team starts getting timers and it's difficult to stop. And the, and the way that it continues like it was, Mouse Sports wasn't late to the buffs being spawned, but they were behind energy. And so whenever you're getting your buffs invaded consistently, being there as it's spawning, you means you're late. You need to be early for those so that you can force back the opposition. And Mouse Sports showing up right as the timer is popping isn't good enough. They need to be there five seconds early. And does that mean they sacrifice half a minion wave, maybe a full minion wave here and there? Yeah, it does. That's why invading buffs is really good. Because sure. you force the enemy team to give up waves in order to contest you properly in spots like that. And energy just wasn't contested early enough. They were able to control the left. No one was looking at Maniac on the right. Nika is never going to be able to outpressure Kukulin. That's just the, the pick that Mouse Sports went for. It's just that Mouse was kind of scattered and they, they were always trying to respond to energy instead of being the one setting the pace themselves. Well, normally in this situation, you'd be like, how does the Phoenix Sieges go for these two teams? But the problem yep. is, is that one of the Phoenixes is already down. Yep. So it's not a real Phoenix Siege. The Fire Minions will be pouring down right consistently, which means that you can just focus on the other two lanes anyway. It makes it very difficult for Mouse Sports already. Just stall out these lanes, wait for your Fire Minions to push. But Mouse has done a good job of shoving that right side. Look at how far that wave is away. But the question is, is where do they defend, middle or left? Because middle is taking heavy chunks from Amelito, who's tanking that himself for a couple of moments. And Adapson and Yaman are busy. And where's Amelzi going? He was worried that there was going to be an engagement on Yaman on this left-hand side. So he plays it safer than sorry. It's going to help them out there because Amelito and Maniac seem to be having an easier time in the mid lane. But now that Amelito leaps away, aggression from Mouse on the left-hand side instead. Going to get the Supernova out of Yaman. Cherry was all on cooldown too, but they didn't get enough onto Adapson to kill him. Nika's here, and in the mid lane, Emelita has been left 1v1 with Big Man Tinks. Right, Phoenix has respawned, though, for Mouse, so if Good they time. can defend that, this will be big for them. Fire main minion wave is still pretty far away. Yeah, you saw the pings, actually. I think that was Mouse saying, hey, we've got a bit of time here to defend this still. We should be okay. And energy, I think, will be saying the same thing of we need to wait for that. We can stay as a five now and allow this Phoenix to fall on the right-hand side. Phoenix already down to half. Is Relic still available for everyone but adapting? on the side of energy. Big Man Tink still has his ultimate, and there it is, channeled through to the whole team. Nika goes in and throws out the ghost, but a big old shell came up huge, and as Nika tries to leave the engagement, he'll end up taking a tumble down, adapting credit in with a kill. Dardes still front line, and adapting got one. He's looking for a second. Still has the ult and fires it off. Dardes taken for a ride, and he's going to get put down as soon as ML finds him on the ground. As does the Phoenix. The right-hand side, the fire minions will be pouring in, so energy can just look towards mid if they so choose. And the Mills are going to tank it up so the team can head on in here. Already poked out from their last siege attempt in this lane. Without the frontliners of Nika or Dardes, this is going to be very difficult to defend. Tings has got to use the Aegis. His beads were already down from an earlier taunt. And now with minions on the left and minions in the middle, energy heading into the base to take game one in a 
commanding fashion. Surgical. That, that, that's the word that comes to mind. Just absolutely calculated every step along the way. 11 to 2. A couple, uh, couple missteps, small missteps from the dual lane of energy, but overall, the, the, it was just a clinical display. It's funny because when you look at this energy squad now, it is, we were talking about this at the end of summer, it's remnant of the team that won two back-to-back -back world championships. Yes. However, that first week kind of took a tumble, but that game looked a lot like the old days of, hey, you can't do anything against us. And now, uh, you know, in game two, it's like, what a sort of adjustment do you make? Okay, we'll just try and out-brawl them. Well, you can't. They, they brawl better than you, too. And that's what makes energy so historically difficult to beat, is that they have so many different styles to beat you with. Dignitas is going to outpatient you all the time. They're going to out-team fight you in the late game. Rival's going to try and out-team fight you in the late, or just play that overall team fighting style. Energy can do that. They can do this. They can do the other thing. I, I, for my money, when they're at their best, they're the most versatile team we've ever seen, and, and that's the reason they've been so dominant. Was Juro Lane specifically, though, a little bit too low pressure? That's the only thing I really look at from the comp. We said we like the comp, but Juro Lane seemed low pressure against the invade potential from the Anho and the Athena. You usually think that the, uh, the Amaterasu is going to help in that regard, but it yeah. really didn't. Spudio just wasn't able to get a hold of that lane. I think something giving something to Spudio, maybe not lane pressure, but just safety so that he can play like he has more lane pressure. Mm. Against the on her, Artemis can't step up because then she is in trouble right away. Even if her clear is just as good, can't be in that same range that on her can afford to be in because he has a lead. Who do you guys think deserves MVP for that game? Uh, it's kind of a tricky call, actually. I think Energy had a good game over him. I think it was Maniac. Right. I think it was Maniac. He just controlled that right side so much. And the one big team fight that we saw, what happened? Can Maniac they? came in, hit a three or four man ult, and just ended the fight immediately. There was the, the formalities afterwards were one thing, but as soon as Maniac came in full HP and hit that ult, that fight was over. Well, let's get it down to the desk to break down game one and go back over what just happened. Thanks a lot, boys. Tom and Tully here to bring you the dynamite. And as we watched game number one, it certainly blew up. Adapting did well on the Naja, as always, but I'm with Ryan. I was looking at the Portuguese powerhouse maniac, just really brought it, and was really able to play that Kakulin. Once team fights started rolling around, he made his impact, transforming, knocking people around every which way like a ragdoll, and the game started off rather slow and methodical. Energy getting a free goal if you're at 10 minutes, only sacrificing a Millsy along the way, and then five minutes later, getting their second one. And I still wouldn't be able to tell you who was going to win the game at that point in time up until two minutes later when there was a full-on commit from Mouse Sports onto Yam and that mm. bait under his own Tier 1 tower being able to disapparate safely, use that Aegis very timely, gave enough of a window for Maniac to make his place. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this ludicrous number, structure damage, 11,000 for the soul player. I just, uh, that needs to be celebrated real quick. No surprise there, Yama knocking down the towers. No surprise here, Maniac is your most valuable player for the game number one. Fantastic stuff from Joao. I just think the way he was able to control these team fights was really impressive. And just the way that he forced everybody to do what he said. I mean, that's really what it was, was the command of this character that really made things for game number one for me. I mean, season four, you would think that it was adapting that was literally Kakolin IRL, but I think Maniac's style suits the Kakolin more than any other god currently, really showing what he can do. And this is the play I was talking about where Yamin survived, even goes back in to that team fight to allow Kakol in round number two. Yeah, I mean, that was, Ryan even mentioned it uh, on the commentary. That was really one of the big turnarounds. And Kakol, yeah, just all ult me, and I am totally healthy, no problem whatsoever. Maniac able to deal with Cherio quite easily. And so Maniac right there earns MVP for his spectacular performance. It was a great draft, I think, overall, going for the soul, really throwing, I think, them for a loop. The Athena, la like, almost last picked, basically, for them. The draft overall in game number one, I gotta give it to energy across the board. I think that Cherio's Bakasura left a little bit more to be desired. Right now, uh, the conclusion of Energy versus Mouse, unfortunately, we are not going to be able to deliver uh, due to some unforeseen technical difficulties. Game one is all we get to look at. Game two, we do have some post-game stats, so we're going to mull over some of the numbers of how that went. But if we can take a tip from game number one and look at some of the numbers, I think game number two went in similar fashion. Yamin on the Aposh uh, 9 
zero and seven. I think that speaks for itself. Yeah, and Emma Lido going six, one, and four on the Jing Wei Poison Star with the Deathbringer. Looks like he had a very clean game on the chopping block. Was Dardis's Sylvanas? We talked about how Sylvanas is usually in that case, and I think Energy stepped it up, beating Mouse Sports to get that pick and really exploited even with Cherio on the circuit. I think adapting outshined him with 14 assists. I don't want to dive too deep without actually having the tape here. Again, apologies uh, on behalf of everybody for not being able to deliver that to you. But looking at Yaman's success and the lack thereof for Dardes and Cherio specifically, Opwash right now is a potent mage that doesn't need to be played into a counter pick up, uh, counter pick match. He can stand on his own. And Cherio and Dardes, it's interesting. Both Cirquette and Sylvanas kind of suffer against him for two reasons. Sylvanas, the more obvious. Sylvanas is not mobile, and Apwash can really prey on those that can't move. And Cirquette usually wiggles out with a hair of HP. I think his dot damage still works out. And I think you made a really good point, I think, at the beginning of game number one, before we went into even picks and bans, how whatever god suits best for Yaman or the best for Yaman. I was going to make a <laughs> splice joke, and I was going to say, well, Apwash is suited really well for the best, and I wish I said that pun because it would have made it a lot better to see the post-game stats for game two where Yaman plays the outwash. More of a, like a traditional North American pick. Stop looking at me that way. You, you lost me totally. I'm sorry. I got nothing for Just you. Just nod and wave, boys. Nod and wave. So, like I said, you know, jokes aside, can't bring you game number two. Emilzy will, though. He did record the game from his own perspective. You can catch that on his YouTube for sure. Make sure to check out all social media for that one. Game number one and game number two go to energy. And so it's an end of the set. Energy over mouse. Fantastic stuff from the guys over there in the pink and white. And so, as far as the standings are concerned, that will change things. Energy now split down the middle. Two and two. Mouse find their second loss of the split. And so they'll be at number five. Still a ways to climb for Energy if they want to find themselves going to land. It's only week, the conclusion of week two out of Europe currently. Mouse with only three games in the book. Their only two losses are to Dignitas and Energy. If you're going to lose to two teams, why not lose to those two? Still have yet to face off against Rival. We'll see that matchup next week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the rival matchup for Energy is really interesting. I think that Energy have been playing like the better team as of late, but we'll see. I was talking about Mouse specifically versus Rival. They have yet to really touch and tango quite yet. Losing to Dignitas and Energy, Rival is going to be that third boss. Friday, we'll see E-United, the defending world champions, take on Splice. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, Counter Logic Gaming will go head-to-head -head versus Space Station Gaming, two big knockup teams. And I want to see CLG versus Space Station. That's really what I'm looking at. I think that CLG are a team that have had repeated downspins for no particular reason. I think that's going to come down to the solo lane matchup. Aquarius versus Fine OK should be really exciting. Could be some fireworks. So far, the fall split, we're about two weeks underway. Europe has already closed their chapter of week number two. Week number three will be concluded, or excuse me, week number two will be concluded by the North Americans tomorrow. And that leaves just a handful more weeks for teams to qualify to HRX. They've got to go through all this play. They've got to go through some land phases. All you got to do is go through your browser, HighRiseExpo.com. Make sure you're in Atlanta through the 16th through the 18th of November. Make sure you also get those after-party tickets and come and tango with us. Do you tango? Yeah, I can tango a little bit. Can you really? Just a smidge. I'm better at the Tarantella, but I mean, to know that you tango is certainly a different story. I had no idea you had that type of move. I got some moves on me. Are you, uh, are, do you lead or do you follow? I can do both. Really? I don't believe you. That's a very difficult dance. It takes two to tango. It does. And it takes two to link your account. You need a high-res account, and you need a mixer account. And once you're able to do that, you are eligible for a whole lot of fun stuff. Go to mixer.com slash account hyphen linking, and then you're able to go ahead and find yourself at the spot where you can go ahead and grab your two accounts. That gives you Pro League Bologna, as well as uh, puts you in the running for other Mixer cosmetics, jams, the whole nine yards. If you're watching the stream on Mixer.com anyway, might as well get that in-stream rewards. Yeah, it's just more free stuff. You're watching the game. D that's what I'm saying. All right, and it's only verifying. You watched the video that I put out before, so he's just taking all my lines. This one, I'm going to control, though. Folks, buy some jams and buy them cheaper. 35% off all jams for a limited time. Tola, can you tell me who's on screen? Yes, Bologna's 
clearly being carried by Chernabog, Enna on the right, and then Baron on the left. That that's that's actually Chernabog in the middle. You left him out, and you think that you think that's Anna on the right? Yeah, that's Pe- I can see it. That's a Pele Anna mix. I, I see. She that. drew it, right? I see that. Yeah, she I, put a hint of herself inside that character. Anna, the famous artist that does a lot of the uh, the two D promo work here, and you can always tell her style. She's got that sort of uh, that cartoony style. One of my favorites, but certainly a lot of fun nonetheless. Grab your gems, link your account, come to HRX, and enjoy. The matches tomorrow we'll see north america united will take on splice and then clg goes head to head or versus space station gaming you don't want to miss it 3 p.m 4 p.m because of patch notes we'll see you tomorrow